So welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is V, and this is another episode uh, of a series where we talk about different uh, actuary exams uh, from the Society of Actuaries. So I am an actuary myself, uh, a fellow of the Canadian Institute of Actuaries and a fellow of the Society of Actuaries. Uh, so this is a second video where we will discuss exam P probability and join me again is Logan. Uh, he also has a fellow of the Society Actuaries. Hi there, I'm Logan from Malaysia. I have been working as a product and pricing actuary in the life insurance industry in Malaysia for more than eight years now. I tutor actuarial students for a few exams, including exam P via Zoom classes. I am really passionate about teaching and mentoring students and I hope to play a part in contributing to our next generation of actuaries. Exam P was my very first actuarial exam. I took it a year after high school and I really enjoyed studying for it. This experience convinced me to pursue the actuarial path. In my opinion, there is really no right or wrong answer for this. It depends on each person. Exam P is a good starting point if you, um, to see whether you like actuarial science and whether you are comfortable with it. Probability is a key aspect of most actuarial topics, so if you like probability, there is a good chance that you will enjoy other actuarial subjects as well. If you really dislike probability, then you may want to reconsider actuarial science completely. However, exam P is also considered to be quite difficult, and exam FM is more straightforward. That's why many students feel more comfortable starting with exam FM first as they want to be sure to pass their first exam more quickly and easily. I agree. In fact, there is no prerequisite for any of the actual exams. Uh, so technically, we are allowed to take any exam in any order that we want. Uh, fun fact, I actually wrote FSA exam level first before taking MLC exam, which is the private version of LTAM exam, uh, in order to get two exam credit, so like total of nine hours uh, exam back then, by writing a six-hour exam. So it was definitely unheard of at my company at that point in time, uh, and I could have been in trouble if I didn't pass. But I did, so everything was fine at the end. The exam system changes all the time in general for a good purpose to make it more relevant for the profession. And if you play well, you may be able to get your associate or fellowship earlier due to the transition. So exam P is also going through some changes as well. Logan, do we know anything about the, result, the redesign of this exam? The SOA has mentioned that some material from exam P that is outdated and not needed in later exams will be removed it will still be a three-hour exam. The revised exam syllabus has not been released yet, so we don't have much more information about this change. However, I think we can safely assume that the redesigned exam P will be quite similar to the current one, as most of the content in exam P is quite important to later exams. Probability is definitely fundamental for actual science. Exam P is a common exam for those who pursue exam system uh, either through the society of actuaries or the casualty actuary society. Uh, and that is the same for exam FM. Uh, so for those who are unsure whether they want to get certified through the SOAs or the CAS, uh, you can write these exam first before deciding. So Logan, do you have any exam tips for people who are writing uh, exam P? The first tip is to be familiar with the official exam syllabus and make sure that you have fully covered all of the syllabus. We often use study manuals for preliminary exams, for example, ASM, ACTEX, coaching actuaries, etc. I did the same too when I was doing my preliminary exams, and most study manuals are really good. You can rely on them. However, you have to keep in mind that study manuals are not the official SOA resources. So you are taking them at your own risk. So make sure that you have fully covered the syllabus in the official SOE resource, the, the PDF that they release detailing the syllabus coverage and read the study note as well. For exam, for exam P, there is a study note about insurance applications. The study manual that you use could be incomplete or out of date. So the responsibility is on the student to make sure that you are covering all of the syllabus. The second tip, is to complete all of the sample exam questions before the exam. 
The sample exam questions and solutions are available at the end of the course syllabus, at the very end of that document. Regardless of which study resource you are using, which manual or textbook you are using, make sure that you complete all of the sample exam questions and that you understand the solutions and the underlying concepts really well. Then tip number three, plan your time well and never, never ever run out of time. My, my, my feeling is that even if you are struggling with some of the concepts on exam P or if you are struggling with some of the questions, there should be no reason that you run out of time. That, that is, uh, in my opinion, that is poor exam strategy. So for exam P, there are 30 multiple choice questions and you have three hours to complete them. This gives us a maximum of six minutes per question. Time yourself and make sure that you don't spend too much time on any one question. If you feel that the question is going to be difficult, so you should have that feeling within the first minute of attempting the question. So if you feel that the question is difficult or if you have trouble understanding how to approach the question, then move on to the next question and come back to that, the, some of these questions that you had trouble with in your second round. That way, you'll make sure that you have a good attempt at every question and you won't miss out you know, the, the easy questions, maybe at the, the last three questions could be really easy questions. So you don't want to uh, be stuck uh, in earlier on and then miss out on, on all those easier questions that you can get later on. I would say time management for writing exam is crucial, regardless of which exam we write. Uh, you may know the material and the answers, but if you don't manage your time well, you won't be able to go through all of the questions, which will surely decrease your chance of getting enough scores for passing. So definitely make sure you go through practice exam with timing to help test whether you will be able to recall material in a timely manner. And that's also the difficulty of uh, writing exam that you have uh, set, uh, set timing and uh, you need to be able to recall things properly. Logan, what do you think is the most challenging topic uh, for this exam? If I had to pick one topic, I think combinatorial probability is the most challenging section. The questions asked on this topic can be really so different from each other. And it is really just like solving a math puzzle. It's like a IQ test. And, and these combinatorial probability questions, some of them can be easier. Um, those that conform to like the hypogeometric uh, probability, so those can be easier to solve. But there are also quite a few of them that where you can't fit any of the usual formulas that you're used to. So you have to you know, really do problem solving with these questions. Thankfully, we usually get only one or two really challenging questions from this uh, from this topic in an exam. So um, you don't, you know, uh, you will try your best, but don't be too afraid about this as well. Thanks, Logan, for joining me today to talk about exam P. Uh, definitely brought back a lot of memory. Uh, it actually took me three times in order to pass the exam, but it's also because I didn't really study for it the same, the first two times, but. Uh, there's no excuse for it. Uh, I was not a really good student back then, especially at the beginning of my Zane journey. At the end of the day, you do need to study hard and also to study smart to pass the Zane. So it may take a few attempts, but do not give up if you are set on trying out this uh, extra profession. So I hope you find today's video useful. And if you have more questions, feel free to let me know in the comment sections. And you can also contact Logan through LinkedIn. Thanks everyone for watching and I will see you in the next video.